Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming. Basically, uh, I'll be issuing uh, two statements. Number one, in respect of the uh, closure of the case investigated by by Negara, and number two, the uh, judges faced by Hairuddin and uh, Matthias Chang. The first uh, press statement. This uh, is in respect of the decision to close the Ben Negara's malicious investigation on 1MDB. Mm -hmm. The uh, alleged offence investigated into <coughs> by Ben Negara Malaysia is uh, basically an offence under paragraph 4B of part 1 of the 5th schedule to the Exchange Control Act 1953. Namely, this is the wording of the charge. <coughs> Knowingly or recklessly making a statement which is false in material particular. In short, the statement made must be false and material to the subject matter, i.e. the information requested by Bank Negara Malaysia at the time when the applicants for uh, when the applications for the remittance were sought for and in response to further information requested by Bank Negara. One MDB obtained three permissions from Bank Negara to make uh, the following remittances. Number one, I give you the dates. Yeah. Number one, on the 29th of September, 2009. Number two, on the 6th of September, 2010. And the third one, on 20th of May, 2011. In the course of us going through the uh, investigation papers, we noted that Bank Nagara did not take more than three days to grant the said permission on all the three occasions. It is further noted that the relevant forms, which, which is known as Form uh, 09A and Form 06B, do not require the applicant to supply the names or names of beneficiary owner or the bank account numbers of the recipients or the manner as to how the funds are to be channeled. In fact, for your information, ladies and gentlemen, this form, Form 09A and Form 09B, are uh, available online. You can download them. It, it can uh, come in uh, a few pages. But it's all very uh, comprehensive and can be easily understood and filled. When uh, 1MDB re requested uh, Dodge Bank Malaysia Berhad to remit to a different account, which uh, would happen in, in this case, Dodge Bank Malaysia Berhad did sought clarification from Bank Negara. And Bank Negara responded by advising Dodge Bank Malaysia Berhad that it being a business decision and as long as there was no deviation from the purpose intended and no further query was made by Bank Negara at that particular time. Bank Negara Malaysia, being the controller, did not stop the remittances or direct Dodge Bank Malaysia Berhad to advise 1MDB to revert to Bank Negara Malaysia for review of the permission. Clearly, there was no information or further information requested by Bank Negara Malaysia at that material time. One MDB rightly furnished the information required for purposes of the remittance. The uh, relevant forms for the remittance in this case did not require, as I said earlier, the applicant to state the bank account number and the beneficiary of the same as in ordinary remittances 
which would enable Bank Negara Malaysia to go one step further to verify where the funds would end up to. Since there is no such requirement or obligation, the omission on 1MDB officials part to disclose is therefore not an offence under the Act. As far as 1MDB is concerned, all it needs to do is to fill up the relevant forms and respond to the queries, if any, by Bank Negara Malaysia. If Bank Negara Malaysia does not request for certain or specific information, how could 1MDB be faulted as he had filled up the forms as required and responded to the queries made? The officials of 1MDB at that material time, I must emphasize, at that material time, i.e. in year 2009, 2010 and 2011, i.e during the process of obtaining the permissions had complied with the directions given, hence the permissions or approval were granted. Until and unless it can be shown that the officials had deliberate, deliberately or knew or even recklessly provided information that were false in material particulars, they had committed to our minds no offence under the Act. The Bank Negara Malaysia, however, as you all know, by the letter dated 1st October 2015, has re requested for rev review of the decision, citing omission on the part of 1MDB, i.e. non-disclosure of certain information. As far as omission is concerned, as I've said, there is no obligation to inform unless requested. In this respect, and the fact that there is no new evidence made available, we do not see the necessity to review the earlier decision. Okay, that's in respect of the uh, first media statement. The uh, second uh, media statement is in respect of charges against Khairuddin Abu Hassan and Matthias Chang under Section 124L of the Penal Code for attempting to sabotage Malaysia's banking and financial systems. On Monday, 12 October 2015, Khairuddin Abu Hassan and his lawyer, Matthias Chang, were charged under Section 124L of the Penal Code, read with Section 34 of the Penal Code, for attempting to sabotage Malaysia's banking and financial systems. This action or this decision by us has been questioned by certain parties including yesterday in the article published in the Star entitled Dr. M. Cooley team up to slam SOSMA detention of 1MDB critics as being an abuse of the government's powers. The Attorney General's Chambers hereby wish to clarify that both Khairuddin Abu Hassan and his lawyer, Matthias Chang, were charged under Section 124L of the Penal Code and not under the Securities Offences Special Measures Act 2015. I repeat, the judges are not under the Securities Offences Special Measures Act 2012, which is commonly known as SOSMA. The Attorney General's Chambers also further wish to clarify that the security Offences Special Measures Act 2012, which is SOSMA, is actually a procedural law that provides special measures to facilitate the investigation and prosecution of what is known as security offences. The definition of security offences make it clear that SOSMA is not limited to terrorism or terrorists alone. The uh, security offences to which the Act applies are those listed in the first schedule to the SOSMA. When SOSMA was enacted, the listed security offences 
are offences under Chapter 6, Roman 6, yeah, of the Penal Code, namely offences against the state. And Chapter 6A of the Penal Code, offences relating to terrorism. I must explain that uh, in 2014, the list was extended to include Chapter 6B of the Penal Code, which covers organised crime, as well as offences under Part 3A of the Anti-Trafficking in Persons and Anti-Smuggling of Migrants Act 2007. The list was further extended in June 2015 to include the Special Measures Against Terrorism in Foreign Countries Act 2015. I want to pause here, I want to say that the list will maybe keep on extending depending on the circumstances and situation that need, that need to be addressed. Now, coming back to Section 124L. Section 124L of the Penal Code is an offence under Chapter 6 of the Penal Code. It is one of seven new offences introduced into Chapter 6 of the Penal Code in 2012 through the Penal Code Amendment Act 2012. It is therefore deemed a security offence to which SOSMA, as I said, the procedural law will apply. The seven new offences are namely activities detrimental to parliamentary democracy, which is section 124B, Attempt to commit activity detrimental to parliamentary democracy, which is section 124C. Then, uh, dissemination of information, section 124H. Sabotage, section 124K. Attempt to commit sabotage, section 124L. Espionage, section 124M. <coughs> An attempt to commit espionage, section 124N. These offences are in addition to the re-enactment with modification of certain offences which used to be in the Internal Security Act 1960, namely the new sections 124D, 124E, 124F, 124G, 124i and 124j. The above explanations we have just given you can be seen in the explanatory statement in uh, explanatory statement to the uh, Penal Code Amendment Act 2012. Section 124L of the Penal Code provides that whoever attempts to commit sabotage or does any act preparatory thereto shall be punished with imprisonment for a term which may extend to 15 years. In this regard, Section 130A of the Penal Code defines the term sabotage to mean an act or omission intending to cause harm, among others, to the maintenance of essential services. While the term essential services is defined to include banking and financial services. The Attorney General's Chambers today has to come forward to provide this clarification on the provisions of law that has been applied in the case of Haruddin Abu Hassan and Matthias Chang in order to prevent any further misleading statements regarding the relevant provisions of the law. We act strictly according to the provisions of the law. However, the Attorney General's Chambers is not at liberty to divulge any facts pertaining to these cases as, the, as you all know, this matter is pending before the court. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming.